Thank you for introduction. Um, thank you very much for um, giving us this opportunity to have a presentation in front of you. Um, today, I want to talk about the little bit about the our SDSA collaboration with the um, with the Docomo and uh, from the court of, uh, and uh, he is a, a visiting scholar at the SDSI and uh, Keita Yokoyama and uh, me is uh, Yusuke Fukazawa from the NT Docomo headquarters. So. Um, Today, I want to share our two years experience of SDSA collaboration from the corporate point of view. Today, I want to talk about the three points and uh, I want to answer the questions. One is that how we decided to do the same from many candidates um, um, that the Docomo has. I think the many of most of you coming from the company is um, affiliated with a big company. So I think that the, which means that big company has many problems to be solved. So from those many issues we should pick up from the to um, to future for the big uh, future uh, business success. So I want to answer the question how we decided the same from the many candidates. Next, we, I want to answer the question to the how SDS helps us proceed the uh, research, and finally we want to uh, overview of the our collaboration projects. So let's begin with um, what we are doing right now. So NT Docomo is not only provides a mobile communication service, but also we uh, provide some upper layer services, such as uh, financial services or TV uh, streaming services or healthcare services, something like that. So we accumulated those data created from those services in one data set, one database. So by using those data sets, um, we, our team members, our data scientists provide many stative art solutions to several domains, such as decision-making services, or consumer services, or enterprise business, or healthcare services. So in the decision-making services, we have to answer the question to the corporate-level questions. For example, how many cell phones should we buy by serving the trade-off between the cost and the benefit from the users? And uh, for example, how many um, how, how can we predict the churn from the users to maximize the LTV from the uh, subscribers? To do that, we do, some, uh, we, we do proceed some research about the supply chain management and the demand forecast and uh, reinforcement learning or something like that. For the consumer business, we have uh, um, 77 million customer subscribers, so that's why we have to promote some content to the users, to the subscribers. So that's why we have to have some um, recommendation technology or profiling or targeting or something like that. For the enterprise, we have uh, some enterprise partners. So as one of the big assets of the NT Docomo is a population, a statistical population created from the base station nodes. So that's why we have some um, analysis about the spatial temporal analysis or deep learning or demand forecast. So as can be seen from this figure, uh, we have uh, huge amount of business issues um, in, a, in addition to the technical broad field. So sometimes we face some, um, we are struggling to find the best practice for some special issues. And uh, sometimes we face the dead end to improve the accuracy. So I, we have no room for improvement in the accuracy by using the GitHub, state of the GitHub. So sometimes we face, as a manager, sometimes we face a training program, problem of the data scientist. So two years ago, um, I, I heard from the, one of the colleagues at the Docomo Innovations. Docomo Innovation is located at the Silicon Valley of the, one of the um, Docomo's branches. So one of the colleagues said uh, us to introduce us about the existence of the SDSI. And uh, I, I joined the exact meeting and I had heard of anything about the SDSI and uh, that this is the answer to my question. So that's why I joined this um, SDSI collaborations. So this is all of the, our SDSI collaborations. Um, the, uh, one of these, the first one is uh, a collaboration theme with the Professor Yure, with the theme of the, which is um, the representation of the customer's behavior. And the second one is the supply chain management with the um, Professor Emma. And the third one is the control of the management of transportation, uh, the, which the tema is the, this theme is with the collaboration with the Professor Marco. So I will talk about a little bit more detail in, uh, in afterwards. So 
Uh, the collaboration with the SDS, is, it's a kind of a growing tree. So in the two years ago, I, I picked up the theme from many candidates and uh, planted at the Stanford soil, like this. So um, with the help of the SDSI, um, last year, some sprout is coming out. And uh, this year, so the tree is growing up, but a little bit small. But next year, we hope this tree will be more growing up and the business impact we, we can get. And uh, um, also, our team member, uh, I take the team member in the six, uh, six or seven in, with me today. So, but the team member skill is improved much with the help of the SDSI. So, but the important thing here is to how to, how, how to pick up the theme from the many, many candidates. That's uh, what I struggled to uh, when I started the project in the two years ago. So I will a little bit talk about this in, in detail. So as I said, there is a huge amount of businesses in, 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 my, in my team, like uh, decision making or consumer business, enterprise business, or healthcare business. So, but there is some, some project is a little bit trivial, or some project has very few business impact. I think that the most of the corporations has experienced the same, same things, but, the, so, but I have uh, three kind of criteria to, to select the theme uh, from this huge amount of business issues. One is that technological difficulty, and the other one is impact. This last one is the business applicability. So um, if the technical difficulty is very easy, if the technology uh, is the same, is very easy, so there is no room for improvement with the SDSI. So that's why um, we emphasize on that the be best practices are known for us right now. And uh, sometimes, number of the possible solutions is too many. So uh, that's why uh, we want to ask the SDSA professors about the best of practice of our approaches, our, our problems. Next one is impact. Because we have to invest the time and the uh, human resources and the money to, to this SDS correlation. That's why we want to expect a large impact, large business impact or a social impact from this SDS collaborations. Third one is business applicability. Because um, our role of the SDSI is to apply the state of art technology to the business. So that's why um, business agility is the most important for us. So, but the, we as a data scientist, not as a business owner. So there is uh, other business owners. So we want to ask the business owner before collaboration with the SDSI that the agreement of the business partner to apply the, our outcome to the business is very important for us. And the uh, last one is the time to business impact. So sometimes uh, this um, collaboration, of the, uh, sometimes the same will be the time to the business impact is very long. So maybe so time to the business impact should be not too long is important for us. So this is our criteria. And uh, we picked up the three themes and uh, uh, we started the project in two years ago. So next one is how SDSI help for us. So, we have a uh, 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 SDSA give us many chances, many opportunities to give us some um, interactions with the SDSA uh, member, Stanford members. So first one is uh, uh, that we have a face to, many kinds of face-to-face -face meeting with uh, professors. So we have uh, advice from professors. This is uh, pictures of uh, uh, the discussions with uh, Professor Emma, with uh, our data scientist. And uh, we have a chance to have a discussion with uh, students, um, the sophisticated students. And the uh, third one is uh, we have a short stay of three weeks uh, at the Marco Labs in, uh, um, in, at the end of the March. And uh, so next one is Vijin Skara. He is a Vijin Skara at the, from the two years ago. He will talk in uh, after 10 minutes. So I will talk about a little bit about the, um, our project uh, which we collaborate with the Professor Yure. Um, because we have uh, 77 million uh, subscribers, um, we have to understand the subscribers to promote, um, to pr promote our content to each subscribers. So personalization is important. So in this case, uh, one percentage of the increase of the accuracy is, has a big business impact. So, but uh, our knowledge, to our knowledge, we have uh, no room for the improvement. So that's why we have a collaboration project with uh, Professor Yure. So we have a data set, like a demographic, or cyber digital, or 
physical logs. So that's why by multiplying our data set with the Eurolabs technology, we get some uh, good profiling or profiling good accuracy or something like that. So achievement here is uh, to be submit the two papers to the KDD and one accepted. So this is the academic achievement. In the next year, we want to make this uh, technology to the business impact. So next one is supply chain management, with, uh, which is a collaboration project with the Professor Emma. Actually, we have a, a, a we sell the cell phone uh, uh, by uh, using the Docomo shops, which we have uh, 2,000 more than 2,000 shops in uh, in Docomo in Japan. So we deliver some cell phone to the stores, and the store sells the customers. So to uh, to decide the, how many stocks to be delivered to the stores we have to make some pre prediction of the customer demands. But if the prediction falls, um, there is an out of stock will happen. So then the customer has uh, no opportunity to buy the stocks. That's why uh, there is a loss of the uh, chance of the profit. So that's why, um, but the pre prediction of the cell phone is very, very, uh, very difficult. So that's why we take the approach of the reinforcement learning. So real-time control of the supply quantity of the smartphone that minimize the inventory quantity and also the out of the stock. So um, as at this time, we apply the state-of-art technology, which is introduced by the Professor Emma and evaluated the total reward currently. So maybe next next year we promote, we have a big business impact from this uh, collaboration. The last one is control the multimodal transportation, which is a collaboration project with uh, Professor Marco. And uh, actually, if you come to, when do you have experience to come to Japan? So um, if you come to Japan at the morning in uh, Monday to Friday, I think that you have an experience of like this, um, the, the left side, uh, right side of the figure. So there are too many, too many uh, people. So traffic situation in uh, Tokyo is very bad. So uh, as you know that there is an Olympic game next year, so I think the situation will be more bad. So in order to, as a, as a carrier of the Japan, so as a number one carrier of Japan, so we want to tackle this issue by our technology, by our data set plus Marco Labs technology. So the op op motivation of this project is kind of uh, optimizing the operation, the intermodal transport system comprising of, for example, taxis, or buses, and uh, bikes, or public transportation. So currently we achieved that we tested uh, optimization problem framework of the multimodal transportation using a Docomo data set. Okay, so that's all from me, but the, he will continue his, uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, just a two message for the corporate members. Um, one is that uh, to decide the theme to growing up the tree uh, is like this. So, the, and uh, SDSA helps us a lot. Thank you very much. So. Hi, uh, my name is Keita Yokoyama. I'm a uh, research engineer at Dokomo Innovations that's located at uh, Palo Alto and uh, business scholar at SDSI. Uh, it's great honor to speak to you today, and uh, thank you for the inviting, uh, kind of inviting uh, me to speak here. So today, I, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, my uh, work. That's about uh, uh, predicting the user uh, mobile app usage on the smartphone, and uh, what I learned as a Beijing scholar. So here is an outline of the, my presentation. Uh, first, I will introduce uh, uh, our motivation and challenge, why we work for the app usage predictions. And second, uh, I explain our program and approach uh, that has uh, two core components. Finally, I will uh, show the experimental result and the conclusion. So in this, this slide, I will talk about uh, our challenge and motivations. Uh, based on the Docomo's corporate philosophy, uh, creating a new communication culture, uh, is Docomo will provide a highly personalized uh, uh, communication solutions. Uh, the role of the mobile phone is, uh, in recent years, is uh, not just for the communicant with the people via the wireless communications, but also the communication with uh, variety of the machine and the apps. Uh, the, it, it is the same in terms of exchanging the user 
uh, intention and the information. So therefore, the understanding of the personal intention and predicting the uh, next action is important in the human enhancement. In other words, we would like to make a smart home more smarter to help people's lives better. So as a study for the pro uh, these purposes, so we are conducting the project that to predict the usage of the application on smartphones. So in this slide, I introduce the uh, problem we face on the app usage predictions. So first, uh, how to use the apps is uh, different depending on the users. Uh, for example, the number of the apps uh, used per day is different. And uh, uh, even if the user who uses the same uh, social network service apps, uh, one user may use it uh, to enjoy the com interacting with their friends, but the other uh, use it to know the latest news. So the intention is different. So understanding the user characteristics is important to predict. So as a second, uh, human behavior has a periodical and long-term dependencies. So we need to consider uh, not only the recent actions, we need to consider the uh, period periodical actions and long-term dependencies. As a third, the number of the times it is used for the each application uh, will be quite unbalanced. So there is a major factor that uh, uh, makes minor app prediction difficult for the machine learning. Uh, the, the next line, the, there is a problem using machine learning as a services in the uh, in point of view of the industry. So first, cost of the managing ML model. So as a one of the approach, so we could uh, make a personalized model for each device's level, but uh, managing the uh, model for the, all the 70 million of devices is not practical. So we would like to take an approach that uh, uh, apply one model to the main users. As a basic uh, machine learning, property, the, uh, sorry, the second problem is the cost of the collecting and storing data set. So as a basic problem, uh, sorry, basic machine learning properties, uh, prediction is uh, uh, accuracy increases uh, based on the amount of the data set. So if you get a more data set, the increase will be, uh, increase the accuracy. So holding the, but the holding long term data set or amount, a huge amount of data set is uh, cost a lot. So therefore, it's des desirable to use a little data set as possible for the predictions. So in this slide, I will introduce uh, uh, architecture for the app usage prediction model. There is uh, basically two components. Uh, one is the understanding user characteristics from the long term usage and the other to get a temporal context from short-term usage. So this matrix shows uh, application usage in the uh, verticals and uh, the time of the time in the horizontal axis. And uh, so we like to divide this data set in two components. So one is the long-term usage, and one is the, the other is the short-term usage. So long-term usage is used as uh, input for the encoding model for the user uh, characteristic. And uh, short time usage is used as a temporal context to understand temporal context. So in, this ne uh, in the next few slides, I will introduce the technique used in each model. So the problem is uh, running the characteristic of the uh, user as a representation is a difficulty of the categorizing the users. We have no label for each person, but uh, uh, to solve the problem, so we use a technique called the Siamese network used the uh, image recognition for the user identifications. So the Siamese network is trained by the distance of the output uh, obtained from the neural network with uh, shared weights. So the ROX function that uh, for the model is uh, designed to be cross of data set 
from the same class, same user, and further from the data set from other users. For example, the model tried to uh, learn the distance between the two images from the former President Barack Obama uh, is closer than the image from the uh, Prime Minister Macron. So the key point applying the Simon's network in our program is how to measure the distance and the similarity. As a simple idea, when we pick up the uh, data set point from the same user and uh, the overlapping of the two data set is large, it can be say it, they are similar. But uh, on the other hand, the data point from the other user uh, can be far. So basically, they are based on the fact that uh, short time usage can be similar among the users, but the, in, even if they are twins, uh, the long term character is different. So there is a slide that uh, I read the technique to uh, train the model uh, property with uh, much unbalanced labels. Uh, Okay, uh, basically, this is, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a difference in the frequency of the usage of the, each application. Uh, I trained the model with uh, uh, weight binary cross entropy loss. Compared to the MSE, uh, it contributes to the contact, uh, correcting the bias prediction result for each application. And as a second technique, I apply the sliding window to increase the data set more from the even a small data set. So this is an experimental result for the prediction of the next hour of usage. So uh, basically as a result, we could get a high uh, maximum 15% improvement in evaluation metrics in, and short, time run, short running time. It is about half compared to the LSTM with the long time sequence data set. So this is conclusion, my, our challenge. So we are trying to uh, help the human enhancement by supporting action on smartphones. And we have a two stage approach and the result, we got high precision and short, -term running, short running time. So this is the last slide, my presentation. So I ran, as a as visiting scholar, I was able to run the cutting edge technology in various fields by participating participating the meeting with uh, uh, Professor Rescovec and uh, meeting with uh, Robert members. The new idea obtained from them, uh, the source for the inspiring the new services. I believe that uh, this is important to bring the academic knowledge to and the industrial area to build a good society. Okay, thank you for listening, uh, taking time.